We've covered the back line. We've covered the forward line in the midfield. Today, we're talking rucks, the rookies, and the premiums on our radar. Hope you enjoy. Joe, mate, rucks are a headache, and this year's not any better. How are you doing, and what do you reckon? Look, I... I don't think it's that much of a headache. Um, I think because the options are so limited mm-hmm. and it sort of depends what sort of price point you want. There is there's a, ruckman at, there's a ruckman at every price point. Do you want to be super bougie? Do you want mm-hmm. to be like Balenciaga? Or would you rather be a bit lower? Or would you rather be sensible with money? Or would you rather want to be a budget shopper at like Big W or Kmart? It's up to you what you want to do. And uh, 2024 Supercoach, geez, has given us a smorgasbord of different price ranges. So I can appreciate that, actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, outside of Balenciaga doing some really dodgy things, and I don't know if we want to associate Tim English with them. Um, but uh, but outside of that, I totally agree. I think if you watched my preseason team reveal video, Gondi's back. That's what I'm kind of running with. But I've seen a few different people running different things. Some running your Tim Englishes, some running I've seen a Kieran Briggs, I've seen a few Sean Darcy's and even a Rowan Marshall or two. On your Briggsy, he was he was a revelation for us this year. Look, we we won't bad. we we won't keep eating into your time, ladies and gentlemen. We'll get straight into it. Now, we normally would be able to put them on the field, but there are only three slots, three slots mm-hmm. available in the ruck line. So we're gonna be slightly limited. But we'll start with big boy Tim English. No speaker the English. He is very expensive. Seven hundred and fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. It it was a big revelation last year, similar to Briggs, but for a different reason, really. Tim English came out of nowhere, had never really played a full season, always had was on the cusp of cool, could score well, got an injury, could do something relegated to the forward line, whatever. I'm pretty sure I saw Tim English taking kickouts at one point in the back line. Yep. So yep. if you had Tim English, if you started him, fantastic. If you got him in early, even better because he dropped in price a little bit. Um, he's worthy of that price. I'm not starting him, but I definitely know some people will. Skip. Skip, I say. That is an exorbitant amount of money. I will not pay $700,000 for anybody. Even for him, he will be in my side eventually. Not at the start. Seven fifteen is insane. Yeah. He is way too expensive. There is no way he is maintaining that. He's got seven fifteen divided by. He has got an average. He has to average over one hundred and twenty-three just yeah, to maintain to that, that price. Just yeah. to maintain the price. So. Look, I don't think I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I can see it sliding. I can see the mm. Bulldogs being shit again because Bevo is a shit coach and Tim English, you're going to drop in price for me eventually. There's some talk as well that he might be sharing some ruck time with maybe a lob or someone else and then English moving a bit into the forward line as well. I think it was great for Supercoach, but the Doggies didn't like the fact that he did fall off a little bit in games yes, last year. So they're trying to rectify that a little bit for 2024. That's yep. what I've heard in preseason talk anyway. So. Wonderful, wonderful means of a much harsher English drop in price. I love yep. to see it. Uh, Rowan Marshall, he was he was good for us last year. You know, he yep. didn't have too many incredible, incredible games, but didn't have many shit games either. Like for us to average us 114, I can respect that. Well done, Rowan Marshall, but not this year. You are the second most expensive Ruckman in the comp. And for that, I don't think you pose much value compared to the others. And for Mm. that reason, I'm going to say skip. Yeah, for me too. Hey, you know who I'm going to pick, but Rowan Marshall's too expensive. I'd rather pick Sean Darcy at 590k than put an extra 400, like 40k into into Rowan Marshall. True. It's, It's definitely not worth it. Well, what you get with Rowan Marshall compared to Darcy is those extra eight games. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But this is 2024, not 23. So you don't Correct. know how many each is going to play. 
Um, Correct. Briggs, re- relevation, relevation, revelation from last year. Um, fantastic player, kind of came out of nowhere. A lot of us had him at, what, 200K? And then it ended up being keepers for the whole year and outscoring a few other premiums at very similar prices at the end as well. So I think some people may consider him if number six on the list there, Max Gorn, wasn't as cheap or Grundy wasn't as cheap. But what really hurts Briggs is that having the extra buy. Um, best 18, you want your best players. And Ruckman generally is those guys who score 115 for you, like every week. So for them to miss an extra buy round is a huge thing. Correct. And when you look at his buyers, I mean, the Giants, he's got this, she shares the buy with Wits. So he's going to be next yeah. on our discussion, but I'm not sure many people are going to be selecting Wits. I don't see why you would. And then here he's sharing it with Grundy. So if you're going with, and let's be honest, I actually want to talk about Grundy because I just mentioned him. I think Grundy has to be the, where is he? I've lost him. Where's Grundy? 400 or something. He's not even. Wait, five, what? Okay. Yeah, he's not even. That. There he is. This yep. guy is the biggest locks in the history of locks. Like yep. WTF, man. Like holy shit balls, Batman. This is Brody Grundy, number one ruck, solo ruck, SCG, small ground congestion, great mm-hmm. midfield, a lot of hitouts to advantage. Four eighty one k. Historically sensational. One of the best. Rucks in the league is an accumulator, can play an extra midfield for 481k. Yep. Yeah, I think so as well. It's it's hard to pass up. So these two share a buy. So it would suck in in round um it would really suck come round twelve for you to have two the ruckmen rucks. out and yep. then you're gonna feel the, a rookie ruck. And rookie rucks don't that, score. That, that's why we pick Luke Jackson, right? So we can. We that's can why we pick Luke Jackson. Yeah. Um, right. Moving down the list, I think we've covered Wits. Was great when he was a lot cheaper a couple of years ago, but he's kind yeah. of turned into a bit of a Nan Curvis now. Like I doubt many people are going to pick him. Um, if Gold Coast had a bit more of. Let me see. If, if Gold Coast had a better fixture, if you knew kind of what the makeup was going to be and say. Their midfield is going to be insanely dominant. I see a position for him, um, but it really comes down to matchup as well. Some teams beat him, some teams didn't. We don't know how a Ned Moyle, who we'll talk about at the end of the video, um, how he's going to go with with Wits as well. So it's a no. Um, yeah. Similar to Sean Darcy, one of the few Ruckman who do have like only one buy. So you're getting an extra game out of him, which is huge. But yeah. you scroll over to that 15, and that's the why that's the reason why a lot of us struggled last year was because we picked him, he did well one week, and then the next week he didn't play. So yeah, it's a big no. Um you're set on Max Gorn the next year, Joe. Yeah, look, he's absolutely value for the price. Um I think being a number one ruck without without Grundy there, it's hard to pass him up. It really is. I am honestly reckon if I wasn't going the Tristan Cherry route, I would be going the Max Gorn route. It just comes down to the money, how I can yeah. square it up all over the field and, and have a and have a strong team. But Max Gorn at 583K, he's 32 years old, but we know that Ruckman have a different sort of timeline with their careers. They're not yeah. like your midfielders. The Ruckman can play later because it takes them longer for their bodies to fill out. So mm. it almost feels like their career of their prime rucking doesn't actually start till a lot later in their careers, which is very different to midfielders, for example. So Max yeah. Gorn is still capable of, of having a great season this year. I just reckon that English is that much of a degenerate when it comes to his scoring. Like, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. He even takes kickouts. He even receives kickouts in the in the back line. Like he just gets points. It was pretty he's funny to watch last year. Like he's a pig. Tim English yeah. is the Nick Dacos of Ruckman. It's ridiculous. So in, in my mind, I can't not have Tim English in my ruck line eventually. So yeah. that's why for me, I might end up foregoing Max Gorn in order to get Tristan Cherry to who I can then trade up in time 
to get English. So, look, Max Gorn is is a is a trust yourself back you gut, but also a free swing. Like I don't know why yeah. you wouldn't go Max Gorn, apart from what I just said, which is a big picture big picture play. But Max Gorn, if you want to set and forget, and you don't want English in your side, a Gorndy combination could carry you all the way. Yeah, and you can always trade him out, like you're saying, right? It's more just something to start early. This is one of the years where we don't have to spend like like one and a half million dollars to finish our ruck line, which is fantastic for us. So yeah, being able to go him and Grundy is it's not a bad option. It's gonna be interesting to watch them play against each other in round zero yeah. as well. Yeah. And it's good because it gets that score gets out of the way as well. So it's not like they have to play each other round one and you know one's gonna dominate and one isn't. No. Once they're in, that's it. And that I don't even think they have the same bite. So you saved from no. the buy round on as well. They're not. You got one after the other here, and then yep. Sydney here, and then Melbourne are over here. So again, they, they don't share a buy at any point. So at, at every point of the season, you're going to have at least one primo ruck there, which is mm. obviously really beneficial. Um, either they don't even share the buy with the with English. Even English has a separate buy. English has a buy with Rowan Marshall here, which yep. would be interesting, um, as well as over here. In round zero. So, yeah, it's obviously not an, an English martial combination is not recommended. Um, even from a financial perspective, it is not recommended. Yeah. For all you new players, don't just pick the best two. Correct. Because um, it won't be the least. Uh, Nan Curvis is probably a no. We don't really need to talk about him too much. Uh, Luke Jackson, we covered in our forwards video. Good yep. good forward line player, potentially, as a, as a loophole or injury cover, but that's really it. Um, Riley O'Brien's probably a no on your list as well. Nope. Yeah, miss. Uh, Goldstein, I'm sad to see him with a sash and not your stripes anymore, but he's definitely a no. Um, there is some talk that, from what I'm hearing, Draper's out still. So he potentially could start as my number one ruck for a little while. Yep. Yep. And maybe, maybe I can see it happening. There. I can see us going one ruck. I can see us just playing Goldie by himself and having two men and Peter pinch hit in the ruck um yeah. we can do that now because we've re we, because we've drafted nate caddy who i reckon will play really early on and nate caddy i think is ready to play right off the bat so by adding this extra forward to our dynamic we can have two meter peter pinch it in the ruck so mm -hmm. i wouldn't be surprised if we see a, a solo rucking goldie and he could be value but be sure that you're going to end up trading him out anyway because as yeah. soon as Draper's back, he's out. So it is what it is. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky yeah. Big O, um, respectable um, yeah, nah. Ruckman. He's not one to score points himself, but he's really good at negating other opposition Rucks. So not really relevant. Darcy Cameron was great when he had forward status. Without it, he's a big no-no. Uh, uh, I think... Ruck mids are really interesting combination because I don't think anyone else is going to have it. So you no. don't even have cover, but pretty much no. Uh, Matt Flynn could be a sneaky pod, depending on if him or BJ Williams plays main ruck. He's obviously gone over to West Coast to play. So no more um, bench time for him. No more VFL time or waffle time, hopefully. Um, Soldo is an interesting one as well because we know that they've gone and picked up Jordan Sweet and Port Adelaide did not have rucks. So Soldo could be a cheeky shout. I hope for our sakes that Sweet plays, though, because he's a yep. lot cheaper. Um, we've talked about Brody Grundy, basically a lock for everyone he should be. Um, he's underpriced, so even if he scores like a 90 to 100 average, you're still making money on the pick. So he'll go up. Uh, English, Marshall, Briggs, whoever else will go down. It's, it's a no-brainer. Um, Draper as well. We've talked about him. Declining as well. And then Tristan Cherry, uh, it's an interesting one. Um, North Melbourne's main number one ruck. I'm not sure if he's going to pinch hit with someone else or someone else is going to pinch hit with him. But I know that historically we only normally run one ruck and maybe like a combin or someone else is that extra player. Um, has had patches last year and the year before when he was available in the forward line that he did score well. So there is potential. He should be able to make some money because he's only, what, Averaged at like a 73 average, so it's not too bad. But yeah, it, it's you got to be ballsy, Joe, because there's no trading up. If the pick doesn't work, 
you're scrambling for cash to be able to do anything. Well, the only way the pick doesn't work in my mind as a solo <laughs> number one ruck for a team with a great midfield like the North Melbourne the has. Injury problems. So more the injury It's the problem. injury problem. That's it. But then again, Gorn and Grundy aren't necessarily the beacons of health either. So um that's yeah. that's the nature that's the nature of the ruck line. Uh he's definitely I have him currently in my side, so he's a plus one, but mm-hmm. also he's a wait and see. Keep track of him over the preseason. Read all the reports, all the interviews that are done coming out of North Melbourne to make sure that he is flying through the preseason, that he's not missing any sessions. If he gets through the entire preseason, then I am very bullish on a guy like Tristan Cherry to make me around one hundred to one hundred fifty thousand dollars, which will mm-hmm. then enable me in time to trade up to an English who should be dropping down in price, especially if he's sharing a role with Rory Lobb. So uh, for me, I think it's worth the gamble, especially if it means that you're freeing up quite a lot of money from Max Gorn to him. That's almost almost $176,000. So that's a a lot of money, $176,000. It's not a player. It's not a rookie. Exactly. So... Or upgrading a mid pricer to a primo, or getting a or getting a rookie to a mid pricer, it's that's a lot of money. So that that's mm-hmm. why I'm saying, like, depending on what you want to do with your team and how the, the the jigsaw puzzle is coming along, you might be able to make use of that extra cash by getting yep. a cherry instead of a gorn. Yeah, no, definitely true. Um, if we move down the list, I don't think there's anyone else who's really going to be main ruck. Um, Maybe Toby Peter Conway Adams, Con- Conway. No, no, I was more talking like the guys after Cherry Price. So oh, Ned sure. Reeves, I'm not sure what's happening with Hawthorne yet. Um, Mason Cox, maybe Braden Proust comes in and knocks Briggs out a year too late. Um, but yeah, talking about the rookies now. So this year we saw a little bit of movement, but also some players staying. So do you want to kind of run through the rookies, Joe? We've got Toby Conway, who I think is being set up to be the, the number one main ruck over there at Geelong because they added Segler, but Segler, you know, he was he was so old anyway. But, look, I think Toby Conway is a fair shout for Geelong. Uh, I know he's 180K, which is quite a bit of money to be sitting on the bench, but I think it's worth the investment at an R3, um, especially if – Someone like Jordan Sweet, for example, who is ideally an R3. But yeah. if he's not named, then Toby Conway probably is going to be... Has, has to become the pick. Becomes the pick at R3. Yeah. You want a playing third ruck. With all of these buys, we are given loophole options automatically. So giving up a slot on your team with a non-playing player, it's just going to hit your cash gen and it's going to slow down your upgrading cadence. So... I think I'm going to line up with Toby Conway up until the until we see whether or not he's named or not. If he isn't, and Jordan Sweet is, or if he is and Sweet is named, I'll probably lean towards Sweet. But I don't think Conway's got competition, whereas Sweet does. So yeah, we're, it's a tough one. It's a real tough one. I might just stick it out with Conway, to be honest. Um, Ned Moyle could be a shout as well with Wits getting a little bit older. So that kind of more expensive 193k has played a couple of games, is around that 200 mark. But you know, if the player's playing, we know how influential Rob's been. We know how influential Samson Ryan was for those that had him last year. Free money is free money. And it's really tough to get to that, you know, 1.3, 1.4 million dollar mark from a 10 million dollar team. So you need the cash wherever you can. Um Moving down the list, as Joe mentioned, Jordan Sweet. Um, McAndrew, I don't think, plays, so you can rush him off your list. Uh, Tom Campbell at a stretch, but, you know, uh, Rowan's got to go down for that as well. We move down the list, though. I have a sneaky, sneaky feeling that a North Melbourne player, Finbar Maley at 102K, forward rookie, could get a spot at some point. So he's one just to watch out for. Uh, North Melbourne are desperate for no, right down the bottom, Joe. Um, North Melbourne are desperate for a second key forward and someone who potentially can pinch it in the ruck. So Finbar came from not even the VFL, came from the, the league below the VFL. 
um, but has been impressing in training. Mature age body doing quite well. Potentially could play, kind of just seeing preseason form and whatnot. But could play second key forward and then ruck alongside Cherry there. So, yeah, it, it's an option. But it's not if a great one, plays, but it's an option. Yeah. If he plays, that would be sensational. And then we could then we could play Luke Jackson in the forward line. And then we end up with a playing R3 with forward and ruck swing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, ultimately that works. But just a big wait and see with a lot of these players. Um, I know Zane Zakalensky there as well, 117K, potentially could play, potentially couldn't. Really mobile um, Ruckman. And obviously Brisbane has lost kind of their guys alongside Big O. I think uh, – it was Archie Smith left at some point as well. So they need someone to pinch it with him. Danaher can't do it forever. So potentially there's a spot there, but it, it's grasping at straws outside of the first few guys who are much more expensive. Correct. And I don't know if Sam Naismith might get a gig or two. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we'll <laughs> see. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe sometimes good, sometimes maybe shit. Um, and on that note... <laughs> Uh, we'll end there the discussions about the rucks. Let us know in the comments down below what you think. Any questions, please feel free to leave them down below and we'll be sure to answer them for you. 100%. And remember, guys, we're trying to build the channel, trying to make everything and get all that preseason content that maybe you guys can't see. You can watch our videos and get those as well. So sub if you haven't subbed already. Jump on our Twitter. It's just above. And then we're trying to build the Facebook as well. So we'll have our, our lot of extra content on there. Remember, guys, here at the Center Bounce, we do the hard work so that you don't have to. Bye for now, guys. See you in the next.